I do not want Kubernetes while developing. It's too complicated. I like Docker Compose and I have no intention to switch to something else. Well, if that's what you're saying, that's just silly. Developers love Docker in general and specifically Docker Compose. It is simple, it is easy to use, and it works. Today, however, I will show you that using Kubernetes for development or preview environments is just as simple as Docker Compose. Now, you might ask, hey, if it's just as simple and not simpler, then why would we move away from Docker Compose? Well, there are quite a few reasons. I will not go through all of them, but only mention two that, in my opinion, matter the most. To begin with, your permanent environments, like, for example, production, are running in Kubernetes, or most likely are running in Kubernetes. You might be using something else, like serverless Lambda or this or that, but you are most likely not running Docker only in Kubernetes. If that's not the case, if you are actually using Docker Compose in production, you're in much bigger trouble than you think. Now, everyone knows that the best option is to have the development environment the same as production. However, that is often unrealistic. Production is bigger. You might be running two or three or five or 10 or hundreds of replicas in production. You do not want that in your development environment. Also, you might have a service mesh, logging, monitoring, and quite a few other tools in production which are not needed in development environments. Or you might want them, but there is a limit to the complexity you're willing to manage and the amount of resources you can spare. Nevertheless, the fact that development environment cannot or shouldn't be exactly the same as production does not mean that it should not be as close to it as possible or practical. If your production is in Kubernetes, your development environment based on Docker managed by Docker Compose is too far apart. You want it to be closer. You want both of them to be Kubernetes or both of them to be the same as production. Now, that would not be such a big deal, you know, being too far apart, like Docker Compose for development and Kubernetes for production, if that is the price to pay for simplicity. However, that is not the case. As I will demonstrate soon, using Kubernetes for development environments is just as simple as Docker Compose. The second point I would like to state is that managing Docker Compose manifests is an additional and unnecessary burden. If your permanent environments are in Kubernetes, you already have Kubernetes manifests. Those might be pure YAML or Helm charts or customize or any of the other tools and formats that are available. It does not really matter what the format is. What does matter is that the manifests are there waiting for you to use them. We just need something on top of them to make them as simple to use as Docker Compose. As a matter of fact, not only that it will be as simple as it can get, but we'll also discover a few additional features that you cannot get with Docker Compose, or if you can, that work better. What follows is a demonstration aimed not to be a review, like what I normally do, but rather to demystify the need for Docker Compose. I will use Octeto as a missing link, and you should keep in mind that there are other tools that might that you might want to consider. Anyways, without further ado, let's see Octeto in action so that we can decide whether it is time to retire Docker Compose. Wait, stop. Let me tell you about this video's sponsor, Zit. Zit simplifies quite a few things. It helps with deployment and management of our applications packaged as container images or serverless or Helm charts or application templates. It allows us to easily run databases like MySQL, Postgres, MongoDB, and Redis. And on top of that, it has native infrastructure as code framework support through Terraform, CloudFormation, or Pulumi. So if you need help 
with running your applications and managing your applications and underlying infrastructure, you should check out Zit. And not only because it's helpful, but also because by checking them out, you would be helping this channel. Now let's go back to the video. So let's get going. Let's see how we can use Octeto as a missing piece that will enable us to use our Kubernetes clusters and Kubernetes manifests and add something on top of them so that we can have simple and effective development processes, environments, and so on and so forth. I will start by executing Octeto context. And over here, I can select which context I would like Octeto to use. I will use Octeto Cloud, but it could be any Kubernetes cluster that is currently available in your kube config uh, configuration. In this case, uh, not in this case, it can be a local Kubernetes cluster, remote Kubernetes cluster, and so on and so forth. But for simplicity, I will use Octeto Cloud, um, at least in this demo. And now, the only thing that I need to do to have a fully configured everything I need for, as a development environment is to say Octeto up. Then it will work for a while, working, working, working. Uh, let me fast forward, but before I do, let me say that uh, there are a couple of things you should do. First of all, subscribe to the channel, like the video, do all the stuff that you do normally with videos. And second thing you should do is uh, what? Yes, you should know that there is a link to the gist with all the commands that I'm executing so you can reproduce what I'm doing. So let's go back to the output of Octeto app which finished by now. And there are a couple of things that happened. First of all, it tried to build the application. In my case, it didn't have to build a new image because I already tried this before. The image is already built, but in normal situation, it would build a new container image. Then it deployed the manifest just as you would deploy the manifest to a Kubernetes cluster for production, let's say, or staging. It exposed a couple of endpoints, HTTPS endpoints, and I will go back to how I can configure and get that something. And finally, and this is very important, it created, it replaced the pod, the deployment of the application with a new container that is not the container that I would deploy to production, but in my case, be the container that contains Go compiler so that I can work and compile my application as I work. Oh, and there is one more thing, probably the most important. It synchronized the files on the local file system into that new container so that whatever I write on my computer is automatically over there. The source code in my case is in that container. And I can prove that that's the case, that that's true by listing all the files in that container. Remember that container is containing only by default the Go compiler. And if I do ls-1, I can see my Docker file and the chart and Go mod and Go zoom and so on and so forth. So all my source code is now inside that container, which represents my development environment together with the rest of the Kubernetes manifest. So let me run the application and pretend that I'm developing right now by executing go run dot, meaning run whatever is in the current directory. Now this will take a couple of moments because the first time it needs to download all the files, all the libraries. Normally I would mount another volume and I will show later how so that those libraries are immediately inside of that container instead of downloading them. But today I was lazy, so I did not set them up. And it takes a couple of moments. There we go, there we go. And yeah, my application is up and running. And I can see that that's the case by the last message that says, hey, I'm listening and serving on HTTP uh, 8080 port. And if I open my application in browser, let me do that. There we go. It says, what do you think of Octeto? Now, I already said, that uh, the files from my local file system are synchronized into that container and I will prove, and that's happening all the time, whenever I change something, and I will prove that that's the case by opening a new terminal and uh, run editing the file root.go. And I will replace the message with, can it replace Docker Compose? Save the file and then rerun my application by executing go run dot. I should have probably installed some kind of a watcher to make sure that uh, my files are, my application is recompiled automatically. I didn't do that. Search for 
botchers depending on your language and by the way if you're not using if you're using a language that doesn't need compilation then that refresh would happen automatically like uh, node.js for example or html or python or any other language that does not compile but in my case i need to compile again and i will do that by executing go run dot and if i go back to the browser and refresh the screen i can see the message can it replace docker compose so my files are constantly synchronized between my laptop my computer and the development environment which in this case is in octeto cloud but it could be in any kubernetes cluster now let me stop that and exit the dev environment and take a look at octeto yaml uh, what i want to show is how simple or complicated it is to configure octeto to do those and many other things and if we take a look at octeto yaml there are three major sections the first one is the build section that says hey for this application, silly demo, and I could have multiple applications, you can, you should build an image based on the current context, and the image will be octeto dev slash silly demo. So I'm using octeto's baked in uh, container image repository. The second section is how we deploy the application. I'm just saying, hey, do kubectl apply with whatever is in the directory kates because that's where all the manifests of my application are. I could have multiple entries in deploy. I could have deployed the, the database or multiple applications, whatever I need. And finally, there is the dev section that says, hey, whenever you develop, that development should be based on the image Golang. When the container starts, it should go into the shell, into bash. The work directory is slash SRC. I want to synchronize the current directory with the SRC directory inside of that container. The environment will be my user and I want to port forward the port 8080. So that's all there is in this example. We could use some additional definitions. We could extend this, but in a nutshell, it's as easy as that. This is as short or even shorter then or and simpler easier than docker compose considering that i already have my application defined as kubernetes manifest i just need to say how it should be built the container image or images how to deploy by executing kubectl or helm or whatever you're using and finally how to define my development environment the same definition in Docker Compose would be equally complex or more complex or bigger and Docker Compose out of the box wouldn't be able to do this anyway because the equivalent of Docker Compose are only build and deploy sections. The dev section is completely new. It's something that Docker Compose cannot even do, at least not out of the box. Now let me destroy my development environment. Let's say that I've finished developing and I don't want to waste resources. I can just say okay to destroy and everything is poof. Gone, no more. Now, there are a couple of additional things that you might find interesting. One uh, is to that we can launch, that we can have different ways to launch a dev environment or development environment. And I can demonstrate that by going to cloud.octato.com and then by clicking the launch dev environment. And over there, you can see that we can uh, create a dev environment using the CLI, just as what I did. Here are the instructions, or we could create based on a GitHub repository or any Git repository and finally from a catalog of services. The one you will use most of the time if you choose to use Octeto is based on the Octeto CLI or at least that's what I'm using most of the time. I rarely go here or never almost. And by the way, Octeto can work with Docker Compose as well on top of Docker Compose instead of uh, Kubernetes Manifest but don't, don't do that. Please, please, please. And this is actually a message to Octeto folks. Please remove, or at least don't make it so prominent, Docker Compose in your documentation. I do not care about making development environment completely different from production. I want them the same. So I'm really interested only in the Octeto's ability to uh, create a development environment in Kubernetes, not, and I repeat, not with Docker Compose. Similarly, we could build and deploy applications separately. Do not do that as either. Do not do that. The real value of Octeto is in creating and managing development environments. There are better ways to deploy seriously to a permanent environment. There are better ways to build. This is good for development environments and it's actually fantastic. 
the rest of commands are just there, ignore them. And finally, if I go to previews section of the web UI, we can see that I can create preview environments. What does that mean? That means that a new environment will be created for every pull request in a given Git repository following certain rules. So I could have an environment without even executing anything whenever I create a pull request, which is absolutely, absolutely awesome and very, very simple. I will not go through it right now because this is not a review of Octeto. I just wanted to show that we can and we should replace Docker Compose with uh, Kubernetes-based environments so that they are very similar and Octeto is one of the good candidates to do that. This video was not, is not, a review of Octeto and you should not think that that is the only option. As a matter of fact, I could have used Tilt or Scaffold or one of the many other tools that are available. And if you're not familiar with Tilt and Scaffold, there are the videos, check them out. However, today it was Octeto's turn to shine. So I used it again, not as a review, not because I wanted to show you all the features of Octeto, but because I wanted to demystify that idea that Docker Compose is great for development, even though we are running production in Kubernetes. It's not. It's not simpler, it's not easier, and it's not better. It's just completely different what you would run in one environment or the other. Now, let's go back to Docker Compose itself. You saw Octeto in action. There is no considerable investment. You already have Kubernetes manifests in one format or another, since you have to have them to run production and other the permanent environments. All you're missing is a few lines in Octeto YAML. And there we go. All of a sudden, we have development environment that is continuously synchronized with whatever we are writing with our code, and it's as close to production as possible. And that is the reason why we should develop in Kubernetes instead of Docker Compose. It's just as easy, and it's close to production. We are getting the simplicity of Docker Compose, your development environments are as close to what you have in production, and you're getting additional features like code synchronization, preview environments, and so on and so forth. And now comes the question for you. Is there a reason to continue using Docker Compose? If there is, I really, honestly, really want to know what that is. Please let me know in the comments. See you next time. Cheers.